welcome to my channel. Uh, today we are back at one of my favorite thrifty places, and that is always Bargain Outlet. Ba -ba -da -ba. Today is also Joy's birthday, so before we came here, we went and got a little bit of Chinese food. I'll put in that little bit of footage there with my dad, and now we are finally going to go book shopping. Hopefully, find some good things in here. Let us go. Sorry. <laughs> You're like, this is my <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Hi, my name is... <laughs> Inferno. In oh, wow. Dante Alighieri. We do have a lot of like religious inspirational books here that I personally don't read a lot of, but I know a lot of people like them. For like a second, I thought I saw a Yoda book in the... Uh, religious section, but it was an elephant. Oh. Which isn't really... That's pretty big. Yeah, that size. doesn't, yeah. Well, I mean, it's also just as weird as Yoda being in the religious section. That would also be really weird, yeah. Um, they also have a lot of books for kids here, and like, popular ones, too. Still have to see this. Oh yeah, we haven't seen Frozen 2 yet. We're losers, that's why. Oh wow, cult classic young adult book. Super, Super size, size slugger. slugger. Cult classic. It always has so many Michael Bay books here. <laughs> I don't understand why. I thought you said Michael Bay for a second. Michael Bay? I was like, Michael Bay writes? <laughs> Every page is like, and then something exploded. Enchantment of Ravens. That's really awesome. It's neat. Yeah. Is that what I think it is? Three dollars. That's um. Is that the? Is that? No, never mind. That's not what I think it is. Yeah, Charlie by Water. Oh. Let's find the best copy. Oh wait, did you? Are, you don't have this. No, I don't. Oh. This isn't Saturday Mass, but it's Charlie by Water. No, I. I know that. What is the best? This looks like the best. I actually got confused because I thought it was part of the Raven book. Oh, no. <clears throat> Isn't this another author you know? Yes, very good deal. Uh, yeah. Seen you clear? I have, um, I have a few of her books, but I haven't read them yet. Oh, Ooh, they have Kingdom of Ash. Can you do another mythology? Wow, they just have so many. Look. Oh, dude, that's, that's actually pretty cool. Tower of Dawn. $3 at Ollie's. How? What? Tone of God, a novel by Wesley Snipes. <laughs> that's weird. He's like, I'm still Blade. Here we see a wild page in her native habitat. <laughs> oh wow. Oh wow. Oh, ooh. With the complete fiction of H.P. Lovecraft. How much is it? Mm. Wow. It is $8, wow. Mm. I'll leave it alone. I could look up just about wow. anything on that. Yeah. It's not like a book book, yeah. I found this. Wow. I have not read her work before, but she writes The Great Alone, and I've heard great things about her. Sweet. It's three dollars. Sometimes you have to do a little digging. It always. Oh. 
We're getting we're getting all Bear Grylls vibes here. I'm in the wild. Sometimes you have to do a little. Find Scooby Doo books. Sometimes you let <laughs> you do a little digging. You find Scooby Doo in the terror of the beast. Is that what that that said? Terror of the beast. What did that say? Terror of the Bigfoot beast. I bet you it's like. Never mind, I don't know what that's about. <laughs> I thought it said once upon a time. Ooh, this was reviewed by Madeline Miller. She said it was one of the best new novels she's read in the world. I tried to start it since her name is Paige, but I ended up not really liking it. So I think I gave it away. <laughs> wow. That's rough. Now, if you don't buy this first book, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> Do you want it? Is that why you're telling me? No! The flight log of Poe Dameron? Are you kidding me? He's like, I'm a good pilot, but I'm also full of bad decisions. <laughs> oh my god, Paige. <laughs> oh my god. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Oh, snap. It's the gorilla's new novel. <laughs> Bet you that's like some really sad book like Freak the Giant. Yeah. That bug. Or not Freak the Giant, Freak the Mighty. My bad. You ever read that book? No. It's pretty sad. If you didn't notice by my incredible amounts of silence, I forgot the general synopsis. <laughs> but I knew it was very sad. I'm oh, no, just trying to get different shots. It's like a movie. Oh my gosh. It's not my fault. <laughs> it seems like your fault. <laughs> no one else is here. It's not <laughs> I don't know. It feels kind of cheesy. Cheesy? I feel like it's supposed to be an, like an interracial couple power yeah. thing. I don't, I mean, not that, you know, obviously, but I don't know. Interracial couples. Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? There's a book called Choke. What? That's what I'm gonna do to you. <laughs> Can this be just be a collection of me grunting as I get up? Basically. It'll be like uh like Geralt. Yeah. Like, mm, mm. <laughs> this is interesting. It's the end of the 19th century in San Francisco's Chinatown, and the ghost hunters from Maoshan traditions of Diazim keep malevolent spiritual forces at bay. Li Lin, the daughter of a renowned Daosh <laughs> exorcist. Okay, that's a long synopsis. I really need to organize. <laughs> I really need to organize what books I have because yes, I don't have an accurate list of books I already own. There you go. That's next on the agenda. That's next. That's the next mission. Okay, so I found all the books that I think I'm gonna get here, and I'll do a little bit of a wrap-up haul for you after this. But we are now leaving Ollie's. And we're back at my library. So this is the haul portion of this shopping, book shopping vlog. But before I get into the book shopping, I just wanted to quickly show you my um, Valentine's Day themed 
bookshelves. I don't know. Uh, if you're new to my channel, then you are probably like, why does this even matter? But I mean, I try to decorate my bookshelves for every holiday. So um, I did Halloween so far and Christmas and now we're on Valentine's Day. I ended up getting five books while we were at Ollie's and I'm gonna show you one more that I hauled just recently. I bought it on Amazon and it was delivered actually on the same day that I went to Ollie's. So I'm gonna show you that one at the end because I'm really excited about it and I wanna tell you about it. But let's talk about the books that I got at Ollie's. So the first one I'm gonna show you guys is Strange Weather by Joe Hill. He is a mystery thriller author like his dad and he is I think most popular for his novel um, Fireman which won best horror novel 2018 2017 some some year like that uh yeah it won on goodreads for the best horror novel of the year and so i've always wanted to read his work i saw this on sale it was on sale for four dollars this is strange weather it is four short novels so like basically i feel like short stories or novellas per his style they are a uh, sci-fi horror so they each uh, follow a different protagonist in a different story one of the stories I know is called rain it's kind of bizarre but basically like the sky starts to rain like sharp objects and nails and stuff so whoever like hasn't taken cover basically dies so that's kind of the one that stuck out to me there's also i mean there obviously there's three other stories in here but i don't know as much about those uh all i know is that i got this for four dollars and i've heard about it before i've heard people say good things actually on the cover is a review from george rr R. martin saying original and gripping so the next book i want to show you is the girl with ghost eyes by m h borison oh i just realized that the author of the tales of the otori series reviewed this leanne hearn um an impressive first novel set in a beautifully realized world of diazim and martial arts that's really nice. Anyway, I saw this on sale. It was on sale for $3 and I was intrigued by the cover. So I took a look at the synopsis and was very interested. This is a historical fiction fantasy, urban fantasy, uh, kind of strange. It is set at the end of the 19th century and takes place in San Francisco's Chinatown where there resides a bunch of ghost hunters. Um, it follows the daughter of one of the renowned Daoshan uh, exorcists and basically she has this unique ability to see the spiritual world and spirits and but she has kind of like brought shame onto her family because of the death of her husband and no various other things and of uh, there's it's actually a really long synopsis but I feel like that's pretty much enough I feel like if you're interested by that like I was then you'll probably be interested in this book so there is a book after this that has been released I believe and a third book is in the series is either released or it's going to be released I think that's what Goodreads seems to tell me okay next up is another book that I actually didn't intend on buying like it wasn't on my TBR until I went to Ollie's and was looking through the synopses of the books there and that is once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. So this is described as a historical fiction fantasy, although one of the genres listed is also magical realism, so I assume it borders very close to just being sort of a historical fiction with some very latent magical elements. Not quite sure, but the synopsis says it is set in London, so on the River Thames, and one winter night in this tavern inn, uh, the door bursts open and a man comes in with this, uh, basically this dead little girl in his arms, and he lays her down and people are fussing over her, and then a, a few moments later she takes in a breath. So basically, uh, she comes back to life and the patrons of the inn are trying to ask her questions. Who are you? How did you get here? How are you alive? And the mystery of the novel, I'm assuming, is who she is. So uh, she is also mute, so that makes things quite difficult. Once again, I was drawn in by the cover. It actually looks a little bit oriental, uh, so I wasn't expecting this to be set in London, but I'm not disappointed by that. And I've never read Diane Setterfield, uh, nor have I read actually M.H. Borison. So these are two new authors that I'm excited to read. She is a New York Times bestselling author, so I got this one for four dollars. So the next book I got, and this is by a familiar author, is Magic Hour by Kristen Hanna. If you don't uh, recognize her name, she is the author of The Great Alone, which was a very popular novel yeah, in the past few years. I actually, once again, was taken in by the cover, and I expected this to be maybe 
a fantasy like an urban fantasy some sort of maybe mystery because it's such a dark cover um but actually this is a romance and it takes place i guess outside of the olympic national forest a young girl a child emerges from the forest mute dirty she's basically a mystery to the town or wherever that she emerges and luckily this child psychologist or psychiatrist who has returned to her hometown aka the town that this little girl appears in is actually um, able to try to help this little girl and figure out her past and why she was in the forest why she's mute etc it actually sounds a lot like once upon a river except for once, once upon a river is obviously historical fiction so i believe it's probably medieval london or something like that and um there's obviously some fantasy aspects at play in once upon a river but they do share that like aspect of the mysterious little girl appearing from somewhere uh mute i don't know <laughs> I recognized her name for sure because I've been wanting to read The Great Alone and since that this book was on sale uh, for $3 I figured I should go ahead and get this. It got pretty good reviews on Goodreads so. So next up and I was really surprised to see that they had this even though they have um, very popular novels all the time I just wasn't expecting to see this novel in particular and especially in paperback which I haven't even seen in like Barnes & Noble but that is the An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. This is a young adult fantasy romantic fantasy um, that was really popular last year the year before uh, because it, it was very reminiscent uh, like of Akatar by Sarah J Mass, I think and also that the cover art was done by um, Charlie Bowater who if you don't follow does a lot of artwork for Sarah J Mass and is really really awesome So I think when this came out fans of Akatar and Sarah J Mass in general were really excited uh, I personally was excited, but I also um, I wasn't like rushing to the store to get it so I'm, and I'm glad I didn't because this was on sale for three dollars so this follows the protagonist Isabel who I believe is a human living in a fey world uh, she's an artist she's a very good artist too so she sells her her paintings to the fey who really prize like mortal art and like crafts uh, so she's a very popular painter and one day she gets a patron a fey patron a fey prince patron uh, named Rook and if you are not aware, Rook is the name of my boyfriend Troy's D&D uh, character, so I mean, I'm kind of already in love with him. I actually did a portrait of him, if you follow me on Twitter, I, this was like the first thing I posted, but I did a portrait of Rook, and you can see him here. But I don't think that the Rook in this book, the Rook in this book, probably looks anything like uh, Troy's rook but anyway she's commissioned to paint prince rook and she ends up painting him <laughs> with mortal weakness in his eyes not sure what that means but he is highly offended by that i guess the painting makes him look too human and like too weak so he spirits her away to the fey realm and puts her on trial uh and things progress not a long book at all i've heard mixed reviews about it i've heard some people say that it was pretty good and i've also heard people say that they could have like done without really reading it it's kind of it kind of slid under the radar i feel like and i'd like to make my own judgment about it plus i mean regardless of what the book is like um the cover the cover of that book is one of my favorite book covers probably ever. Every time I see it in the store, I just, it's so beautiful and that's probably just because I really like Charlie Bowater's work. But I believe in total I spent $17 on all those books from Ollie's, so practically the price of one book, I got five books. And I'm pretty happy with all of them. Um, I, there are three hardbacks in there and two paperbacks, so feel like a pretty good mix but last of all i just wanted to quickly show you the book that i got on amazon and that is well met by jen deluca so this book has actually been in my tbr for quite a while and when i tell you the synopsis you'll probably understand why but um i wasn't i don't read a lot of straight romance novels so I wasn't sure if I was really gonna like it. I hadn't really heard anybody talk about it. I just found it kind of on a whim one day. And then a couple days ago, maybe last week, one of my favorite booktubers, Samantha from uh, Thoughts on Tomes, posted about this book because she was reading it and she was freaking out about it. I just trust what she says because she is kind of critical, which I appreciate in a booktuber. And she thought this was good because she's not really a romance 
reader uh, if she thought this was good then it had to be good so um immediately i turned to troy who has like amazon prime and i was like i'm gonna give you this 20 dollar bill please get me this book and he was like okay and he ordered it and it came two days later and i was really really excited so this is a contemporary adult romance and i believe it is the beginning of a series although i'm not really sure if the second book is out yet i don't believe so so it's about a girl named emily who goes to willow creek maryland to help her sister and she ends up volunteering at a renaissance festival uh if you are not new here then you know that i love renaissance festivals i go every year with my friends and i actually do have a vlog of the renaissance festival if you're interested i'll put it up here but um so she ends up volunteering at the renaissance festival she kind of does it lightheartedly and in volunteering at the renaissance festival she meets the uh, a school teacher who is like in charge of the volunteers his name is simon and like the renaissance fair is like his family's legacy he takes it very very seriously and so they kind of butt heads because she thinks it's kind of like a fun kind of dumb thing to do and he like it's very important to him but really that's not even important to me what's important to me is that this is a romance novel set in a renaissance fair like that is amazing and like my nerdy dream like it sounds very summery and fun and I can't wait to read it. I don't know if I'll be able to soon because um, now that I'm back to school, I have to read things for school, but I really hope I can start this soon, um, especially after hearing what Samantha had to say about it. I'm so psyched. If any of you have heard of it or have read it, please let me know your thoughts or any of these books, in fact, especially the Once Upon a River and The Girl with Ghost Eyes because I haven't read either of those authors before. Well, I haven't, I actually haven't read Joe Hill or Chris and Hannah, but I've heard people's thoughts about them a lot. Um, but the other two, I just haven't heard thoughts about their writing or the book. Um, I know that Goodreads says good things about them and the books that I got from them, but personally, I don't really know. If you have any thoughts about any of the books that I got, feel free to let me know. I am very happy with the bargains that I got at Ollie's. I always am. If you have an Ollie's near you, I highly recommend going and checking it out. In the footage I have at Ollie's, you probably saw me digging through a lot, and that's kind of just what you have to do when you go to a place like Ollie's. Wow. <clears throat> But it's totally worth it if you can get a hardcover um, bestseller for $3. Like, needless to say, that is an amazing deal. Um, and personally, when I find books at Ollie's, they're usually in pretty good condition. They do have one marker spot on the top, usually, to mark that they have been resold to Ollie's, I think. Um, which, that doesn't bother me at all, because especially when you put them on your uh, bookshelf, you're not going to see the top where there's like one little mark marky mark sharpie thing so that doesn't bother me at all if it doesn't bother you then ollie's is a great choice but anyway i'm i'm literally out of breath from talking so <clears throat> That's all the books that I wanted to show you today. Uh, if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you're having a great week, and I will see you next week. Bye! Bye.